everyone. Uh, welcome back to another day of uh, Future of Tanzania. So uh, I hope you guys are all excited to learn. Uh, before we start, I have some things to go over. Uh, as you can see in the general chat, um, you're going to see this, but uh, yeah, we're going to have a showdown. Uh, showdown 2023, which will start on the, um, what is it called? The 18th, uh, July 18th. So starting next week, starting from July 4th all the way to July 7th um, for three days because we don't have class on July 5th. Um, we're actually going to uh, teach you guys about the competition, uh, how to prep prepare for that and such. And then on July 11th, um an 8 a.m on a tuesday the competition uh preparation site will open for you guys to start practicing for you guys to better yourselves and get ready for the um what is it called Com showdown and registrations for this competition the showdown will close on uh, july 18th at 8 a.m so please excuse me uh join the uh showdown discord which has been sent in the general just press join on the thing i sent and please sign up uh for the competition at showdown2023.square.site uh if you guys go there uh you guys should see the sign that says sign up and you guys just have to follow that directions and you should be able to sign up and through that you guys should be ready and so yeah so on july 18th 8 a.m. the competition will start and for 48 hours basically two days until July 20th 8 a.m. the Thursday the competition will run and on the 8 a.m. of July 20th it will end and on July 21st the announcement will be made for the placements on the website showdown2023.square.site and on the saturday of that week july 22nd at 9 a.m at 2 11 a.m there will be an award ceremony ceremony at e3 empower where prizes will be given out as well as raffles and brunch so i hope all of you guys can be there it's going to be really fun and it's going to really put your uh, coding skills to the test so i hope everyone studies well for this and yeah good luck and i'm gonna pass it on to the teacher for today until then See you guys. Right, hello, everybody. Uh, so today we will be going over machine learning. Uh, if you recall from Tuesday, we uh, did teachable machine, but we kind of want to explore a lot more about machine learning today. Uh, so let's get started. Let me share my screen. We could see my screen. Let's yeah, I'll do it full screen. Okay. So once again, welcome to machine learning. Let's see if I could. Yeah. Okay. So let's get started. So if you recall, on Tuesday, we used Teachable Machine. And what we did was uh, we made a dog class, a cat class. We trained a model, and we uploaded our own files to see the percentage of cat and the percentage of dog. All right, so we kind of had a lot of fun messing around with even putting our own images, like our mm -hmm. own faces. And basically what we did on Tuesday was creating our own machine learning model. Now this is a lot more simplified, right? You can see it's a lot easier to just um, create this model using this, uh, these advanced settings, loading your own data with, a, with just a button, right? But pretty soon you'll see that we can actually make all of this using Python. And recall that there were four steps in order to create or use this uh, machine learning model, right? We had to give the model data, the right here, our dog, cat, 
plots. We gave it data. We created the data, or sorry, we created the model. So right here, you can see we uh, we customized all these settings, right? The epochs, the batch size, the learning rate. We initialized the model, right? Or we created the model, and then we trained the model. If you recall, if you click this button right here, it will train the model, and your model will basically train using this data set. And um, the next step, it will be able to use, or the model will be able to use um, the data in order to predict. So right here, it predicted that this cat picture was 100% cat. And uh, right here, I've bolded these four words. So that's what I want you guys to remember, is that the steps that we will use, this four-step pattern, we will keep using them all throughout uh, today's lesson. So the, recall that the first step is to gather your data. The second step is to initialize or create the model. The third step is to train the model. And the fourth step is to use the model. Right, so I'll leave it here for a little bit so you guys can kind of see uh, what we did on Tuesday and what it means for uh, today's lesson. Hopefully you got that. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. So once again, what I like what I've said before, this four-step pattern of creating or gathering data, creating the model, training the model, and um, using the model, we can use this four-step pattern to create our own machine learning models using Python. All right. So before I get into that. Let's go over some new words that you might not know that we'll encounter a lot throughout this lesson. The first is linear regression, right? And basically what that means is that we can define a linear relationship between um, an independent and dependent variable. Simply put, if we have a data set like this, right? Imagine that these blue points are our data. We could just, um, create a model that kind of predicts a line as the relationship. But so I'll go over some examples on what linear regression looks like. But if you can see right here, this graph, this is showing that our data set can be simplified as one line. Right? This line right here represents our data set. So that is linear regression. A classification is a little bit different. Instead of defining a linear relationship, it defines classes or it categorizes data into classes. So as you can see right here, our model classified our data set as a red class and a blue class. And if this looks kind of similar, that's because uh, we've actually done that on Tuesday, right? we classified our uh, pictures as either cat or dog, right? So in that same way, that is uh, what's called classification. Okay. So this is the difference between regression and classification. Okay. So this is another word or um, another phrase that you should remember is supervised learning, right? So the machine learning that we'll be doing all throughout today is called supervised learning. And okay, uh, and it's basically machine learning, but with labeled data sets. I don't know if I could zoom in more. Yeah, sorry. Um, so what does that mean? Supervised learning, that means it requires human intervention or human input um, in order for the model to work. Okay. And we've actually also done that in Teachable Machine. Right. Let me actually exit out of this. 
and show you right here this part where we created the dog and the cat class, right? We classified all these images, either, either dog or cat. That right there is a part of supervised learning, right? Because we're helping the model figure out what is a dog and what is a cat. So let's go back. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually leave my screen here, but this is just some of the stuff that you should uh, be comfortable with. Yeah, I'll leave it. So let's move on to our first um, little project. So recall that once again, supervised learning is when uh, we kind of help the machine learn. And let's look at an example. So right here, what we're going to focus on is a cause and effect relationship. And that is essentially what linear regression is. Remember when I said that linear regression is when we define a model that creates a linear relationship? That is basically what cause and effect means, right? So simply put, regression can just be um, expressed as this right here, right? So if you forget what regression is, just think cause effect. We have a cause and we have an effect. So let's look at a more uh, an easier example. Let's say we have lemonade sales, right? So if we're trying to sell some lemonade, we want to see how the cause of, of some variable gives an effect. Or we want to examine um, we want to examine the relationship between some variable temperature and actually let me yeah, make it bigger. Um, we want to examine the relationship between our temperature variable and our sales variable. And why is that? Well, it's because we want to predict how the temperature has an effect on some value. All right. So this is pretty important, especially in business, because if we can predict using a machine learning model, um, given data, we can predict Oh, sorry. We can essentially predict outcomes, right? All right here, uh, if, I don't know if you can see this, but let me actually turn on laser pointer. But if we have previous data, right? So the previous data is, um, let's say, oh, these, these dates aren't accurate, but let's say like um, this is uh, like three days ago, this is two days ago, this is um, yesterday, right? Let's say we have the data for those three days, right? So let's say um, three days ago, the temperature was 30 degrees and the sales was 60 lemonades, right? Likewise, let's say two days ago, the temperature was 24 degrees and the sales was 48. And then once again, let's say yesterday, the temperature was 20 degrees and the sales or how many lemonades we sold was 40, right? So this is our previous data. So what we can do is we can predict, uh, let's say like a week from now, um, if we can predict the temperature or if we have the given temperature, uh, we can find these sales, right? 
or let's say like today, right? If today's temperature is like 40 degrees, we can predict how many lemonade we can sell. sell. Right. So in that way, um, a machine learning model is a very powerful tool in order to predict outcomes. Let's move on. So right here, the cause and effect relationship. Uh, there are formal terms for both of the words. So we have an independent variable and a dependent variable. So this is, um, I don't know if you've taken algebra, but in algebra, there's a concept of the cause and effect where the cause is your independent variable. Usually we denote it with, let's say like a variable X and then the dependent variable we kind of denote it with a Y, right? So we're trying to see how does this independent variable have an effect on the dependent variable? So in our example, how does the temperature affect the sales? So what our machine learning model does is it finds that relationship. It finds, okay, what, how do I turn this temperature and uh, figure out the relationship of the temperature and the sales? So if you can kind of see it, it's, it's pretty obvious that 30 times 2 is 60, 24 times 2 is 48, 20 times 40, uh, 20 times 2 is 40, and so on and so forth. And we can kind of see that the temperature times 2 will give us the sales, right? So once again, so what our model is doing is it's finding the relationship, right? And the relationship is... Uh, multiplying by a factor of two, right? That's how we get our dependent variable. Right. So like I've described before, what we're doing is regression. Um, when we did Teachable Machine, we were classifying, right? We we're uh, putting it at a cat or a dog. Let's we start our lemonade sales project. So hopefully you remember the four step process that I've told you guys, but now we're gonna kind of um, actually make it less abstract, like make it easier to see how we're gonna actually code everything. So once again, it's the same process, right? We're gonna prepare the data, we're gonna create a model, we're gonna train the model, and we're gonna use the model. Okay, let's start. Okay, um, I'll actually show that later, but let's first see. Okay, this is the code for, oh wait, actually it's missing. Oh, it's missing slides. Okay, I'll just show it live then. So hopefully everyone could open collab.research.com um a google.com uh but i'll provide it in the question and answer and live lecture notes but this is where we'll be um or this will be the environments that we'll use uh vs code is i've tried using it with vs code and it doesn't really work that well and uh Polab is a very powerful uh, environment so hopefully I'll just give like two minutes for folks to uh, find collab, open it up. And yeah, once again, if you look at the question and answer panel, you should find the website. Mm 
Um, hopefully you found it. So uh, if you go to colab.research.google.com and you sign in with your Google account, you, I believe you will. Yeah. OK, yeah, like that. Um, what you have to do now is you click this button right here, new notebook. And this will open up a new notebook. And this is where we'll be typing up all the code. So like, uh, like someone already posted, you want your screen to look like that. And then you want to click a uh, new notebook and you will uh, be open to something like this. Okay. Oh, let's get started. All right. So um, a good way to approach this problem, right? This lemonade problem um, is to break it into steps, right? So first we need all our import statements, right? Because we will use uh, two libraries called, oh yeah, import, TensorFlow, right? Tensorflow, TensorFlow is responsible for all the machine learning aspects that we will use. And then we will use a library called Pandas. And Pandas is for formatting, for data formatting. Right here, the machine, here, actually, to make my, here, maybe, okay. Uh, this is a machine learning library. And this is data formatted. Okay. Also, uh, just in case you don't know how to make code blocks or run them, right over here at the very top, there's a button called plus code. If you click it, it will create a code cell, right? So the way that this environment works is that you, uh, instead of like in VS Code, where we have one continuous stream of uh, words, we have code blocks that we could use in Colab. So uh, hopefully you've got that. Got that. Uh, yeah, and then when you want to run a code block, you hover your mouse over this play button, and it will run the cell. So initially, it takes a kind of a long time, but it gets a little bit faster. Don't worry about it. So make sure to run each code block. In this case, you have to run these import statements. Otherwise, uh, your code won't work. So make sure to run your import statements. Okay. So let's kind of draft our plan, how to solve this problem. So the four step uh, pattern that I've told, uh, that I mentioned multiple times, we'll use that to kind of format our code. So first of all, we have to prepare the data. Right. And then I'll make individual code blocks. So right here, I can click code block this uh, plus code button to insert a code cell. And we'll do that uh, four times because there's four steps, right? So we're going to create model. We will train the model. And then we will use the model. Oh, yeah. let's leave my screen here so you guys can see. Start. So the very first step 
to prepare the data. You don't get it on running the first cell. Um, is it, have you clicked the run cell button? Make sure your syntax is all correct. Um, import TensorFlow as TF, pandas as PD. Make sure all your syntax is correct first, since um, it, will, it will actually like throw an error. Right. So make sure your syntax is right first. And second, make sure to click um, this run button. Uh, hopefully that answered your question. Oh, and make sure you're, you're using a code cell and not a text cell, right? In the text cell, all it does is just, it just adds text. It doesn't really do anything. So make sure you're using a code cell. Yeah, so you uh, want to create um, a code cell and write all of this. Okay. Uh, and make sure to run it. So click the play button right here. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so let's start preparing the data. Um, so right here, how we're going to use data is we already have um, what's called CSV, CSV files uh, that we've already generated ourselves. But right here, I, I, I don't know if one of the teachers could uh, link those CSV files. That would be pretty helpful. But yeah, it's in the, it's in the notion, I believe, or somewhere in the slides. Um, So what we're going to do is we're going to read data from this CSV file. And you can see this has all our um, data. All right, we have the temperature and then the sales. So what we'll do is first we'll create a path variable. All right, and this is the path to our CSV file. Right, you can see it's just the uh, the link to the file. Okay, and the next step is to create another variable that will store all of that data. So since this is a problem about lemonades, we will create a variable called lemonade. And what we're going to do is we're going to call the read CSV method from PD. Right, recall that PD is, is our, we're using the data formatting library. And what, what we're doing right here is we're reading the data from the uh, CSV file. So read data from CSV file. Okay. So the fact that the variable lemonade has all of our data. Let's call the head method on lemonade. So make sure to run uh, run this import statement block first before running the next block. Right. And then if you run it, you can see that it's successful. We've stored all the data into lemonade. I'll just provide this here. Make sure to go to question and answer channel. And here's a CSV file so you can follow along. Yeah, this is what you want to do. Here, this is the first step to preparing the data. Okay. 
Um, right, we move on. Here, uh, we've successfully um, created our lemonade variable, but we also have more work to do. Okay, good morning, Jacob. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is Mrs. Lee, uh, uh, the head of the E3 in power. Uh, who else do we have here? So Sean, Justin, Kay. Hi. 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 Thank you so much for the Hi. last two weeks that you were helping our students to learn very uh, good steps for uh, uh, Python. Uh, I understand there will be one more week okay, for machine learning. Is that right? And then followed by it, another exercise time for coding contest. Did you guys hear me? Can you today, before you end the session, can you please share with our student members that what is expected of them? And plus, there are other people already signing up outside of uh, this group here. Um, so I am sharing your flyer to many, many uh, students who took this Python class. And uh, some are joining from other cities, like Dodoma, Dar es Salaam, and so on. There are, they are college students. And so are you expecting them to also create this core account and all the contest work will be done in Discord? Is that right? Discord will be required because um, uh, we will make announcements and such on through the Discord channel. So if the college students who do have access to a computer, uh, if they could get Discord so we can communicate with them effectively, it would be extremely ideal. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, I'll, yes. Some of them might come here to learn it, like from IAA, which is uh, in, in uh, Arusha, Institute of Arusha Accountancy. But there are people from Dodoma, if they are uh, going to just check in, because we made it clear virtual, right? So anybody can join. So could you please write a one-page instruction? Because some people may never know about the Discord, OK? So in order to apply, one, you have to if you have to put an application uh, through the link number two, and then they have to say which college, which is a school, uh, what year. Okay, I think you already got that in Google Sheet. Okay, another one is that within two or three days, if uh, we say okay, we got your application, welcome. This is the how to set up this. Our guys know, but some other people may not know. And then um, maybe starting 11th on, you can say, okay, we are assuming all the Discord accounts, and then you can say, please connect with me. Okay, I don't know if it's gonna be Sean or it's gonna be Jacob. So just connect with us so we know you have created it, and then we will have a practice session on 11th and 12th. You can designate the hours. Okay, because we don't, yeah, so it's ours as obvious, 8 to 9, 8.30 to 9.30, and so that you can be 10.30 to 11.30, you know, I'll say just one hour, and you can give a bunch of exercise files for them to follow along. But first few uh, hours, couple of days, they need to know how to uh, navigate through the Discord account, okay? Yeah, and then kind of expectation, uh, the contest they come, so they know where to read all the problems and how to answer it. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. So yes, uh, we will make the document and we will send it right away as soon as possible. It basically, uh, on the document, we will explain how to get Discord, what to do in Discord, where to go on Discord. And most uh -huh. of the uh, other directions for the competition will be on Discord, and we're going to detail that 
on the channels for announcements so uh, uh-huh. all the other students who once they get Discord can uh, assess what they're supposed to do and uh-huh. if it's not clear uh, I believe uh, please just message us so we can make uh, so we can make it more clear for everyone and yeah so um, yeah. we will make the document as soon as possible and we will set it right over great yeah 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 so they are using uh, discord.com there's no cost to for it right they just need a Wi-Fi internet somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah uh, Discord, you just need a Wi-Fi to yeah. just check the messages, uh, and right. that's about in it. That, yeah, it doesn't document, cost anything. You could add Mr. Harrier's number. Okay, keep them mm-hmm. local number, Mr. Harrier's, and also his email. Okay, so when they have a question and they want to speak widely and they want to know how to set it up, then they can contact. Harrier next week all along before the practice session begins. Get it? Yeah. So Jacob, Sean, who's Sean? Sean, okay. Hi. And just yes. hi. Taeyeon, Taeyeon back. Okay. Yeah, thank you for your wonderful services. Uh, later on, we will write you a, a little bit of a credit for the uh, your service, volunteer work. And so, uh, give us your uh, profile uh, to us, and and uh, so on and so forth. Okay. Thank you so much. VOC already sent us that uh, uh, funding so that we can do this, okay, including internet fee. Yeah. Thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you too. Okay. So if you are inviting someone, okay. You are welcome to, as long as they are in school. If they know, so. Okay, uh, let me go back to the lesson. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So make sure to check uh, updates on the Discord server, and if you have any questions, uh, yeah, feel free to ask any of us. Uh, yeah. Let's go back to where we were. Let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, hopefully you've gotten this part. So right. So preparing the data not only involves uh, storing our data from the CSV file, but also defining our independent and dependent variables. All right. So the way we do that is we create a variable called independent, right? And then we basically, uh, we select the column names of Lemonade. So what that means is this column right here will be our independent column. And this right here will be our dependent column. And the reason why is because uh, the independent variable, right? It's our X value or our uh, cause variable. And this dependent variable or Y value is our effect variable, right? Once again, we want to look at the relationship between temperature and sales. And in order to do that, we need to create our independent and dependent variables. So for here, I have independent and we'll set it equal to lemonade um or we'll set it equal to lemonade and then we will pick the temperature column this right here is the syntax for declaring our independent variable so likewise if we want to create our dependent variable the dependent and then we use the sales column And to make sure it worked, 
we could print both independent uh, and dependent. So here, you can click this play button. And you can see, ooh, yeah, OK, it worked. So this right here is our independent variables. And although it looks very strange, um, that means it worked. It stored the variables. They're right here. Sales, their dependent variable, and that was also uh, stored successfully. Right. I'll give time for folks to copy this down. And these right here, these print statements are just uh, these. I'll check to see if uh, variables were stored. Uh, okay, how do I know? Uh, hex or let's that independent. Dependent variables as uh, variables this it work? Oh well. Independent dependent variables work. Yeah, yeah, we want it to work. Okay. So mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I'll go a little bit faster. Sorry if I'm going too slow. Um, yeah, so this is just the first step. Our data preparation is complete. Now let's move on to creating the model. Okay, where we create the model is we have to define our X and Y in terms of uh, layers, right? So. Let's start by typing. Where am I going? Here. X equals TF. No. There's. 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 I will type this too. There's layers. One. One. X. OK, let's kind of explain what's going on. So right here, this is our input variable, and we define it as an input layer. Okay. Uh, right here, this is our shape equals one, and what that means is we're passing that many amount of input variables. So uh, later on in future projects, we will go over more complex problems, but for now. Our input variable, we only have one input variable, and that's the temperature. Right? Um, I'll just show you like a little sneak peek of what's to come. But if you have a problem that's like involves, let's say like 13 input variables, you'll see that the shape of the input variables is much larger. Right? So this is what we're this is what it means by shape. We are essentially uh, creating an input layer with one or input variable. This is what it means. Um, why? And then if moving on to the why, this um, right here, this number means the output. How many variables will we output from this layer? And we write it in terms of x because um, in algebra, uh, when we define a linear uh, relationship between two variables, we use the form y equals bx, right? Or y equals mx plus b, right? Uh, what, what our model is essentially trying to find is this uh, constant right here. Or, I mean, it's not a constant, but uh, we're trying to find this value. Right? Uh, given an x and given this m and uh, this constant b, uh, we want to find y, right? 
So once again, our model, what our model is trying to do is trying to find this M variable. And you can kind of see, uh, just like, just by looking at this, uh, line, it kind of resembles this, right? We have the Y on the left side. We have the equals. We have this mess, right? And then we have the X. You, you can kind of think of it as, um, like this is what it means. This is an equation. Uh, right here, this one right here, this is telling us that we want to create an output layer with one output variable. Okay. Yeah. Um, So uh, try to copy this down. You don't have to copy these comments. I, I just wrote them here so you can understand what's going on. Uh, but make sure to type this out. So uh, now it's time to actually create a variable for our model. Now that we've defined X and Y. So what we do is we do model equals tf.paris.models.model. And then we pass in X and Y. Okay. And the next step, we want to compile the model. What we do is uh, for this particular problem, we will use a uh, parameter called, or, or for our loss parameter, we will uh, use MSC. And uh, basically, this is, we are defining our loss uh, function. Uh, this is a statistics concept, but basically, we want to prove, uh, or we want to initialize the model with a loss or the, the name of the loss function, right? MSE, that's for mean squared error. And this is, we're just defining the type of the loss function. There are multiple ways to figure out um, the, how accurate your model is. And in terms of a loss, right? So the greater the loss, that means your model is not that accurate. Yeah. Okay. And there's I'll copy this down. Actually, uh um, use a model that okay. I I will do this. We can we can move on to number three, but feel free to copy uh, number two while I'm working on number three. So what we've done so far is we've prepared the data, we've created the model. Now let's train the model. So what we'll do is we'll invoke the fit method and model, and the fit method requires the independent, dependent, and the epochs. So if you remember from Teachable Machine, this word right here, epochs, this is how many times your model will train, right? So obviously, the more times you train your model, the more accurate it will become, right? So for our case, we have to define the number of epochs. Right? Epochs means how many times we want our model to train. And obviously, the higher the number, uh, the, the more accurate it is. So let, let's initially set it to a hundred. Okay. And then 
there's another parameter that you can do and it's called verbose and if you set it to equal to zero um it won't print out every instance so what, what that means is like if you don't set verbose equal to zero and you run the cell it will print actually let's do 10 to make it easier uh if we run this code right here oh we first forgot to find it oops yeah make sure to run all your blocks before uh let's train the model right, right here you can see that um that model.fit printed every single epoch and yeah, that's pretty cool but if you want to print it like a thousand times we don't want a thousand print statements that's very annoying and it takes a long time so that's why you do for both equals zero saying uh train the model a thousand times but do not print the results print result do not but no Mm -hmm. uh, okay so that's it and then let's let's print um 10 more epochs okay right? so a total of 1010 epochs and this is just so we can like see or compare the loss because if you see right here the loss that right, is pretty high so what does that mean? That means that our model is very inaccurate. Um, so let's, I'll actually kind of show you. If we use the model right now, uh, the way you do that is you predict, then you pass in the independent variables. And then let's compare it to the dependent variables. All right, so this is our way of checking uh, these are our predictions, right? Our predictions. And these are the actual values. Actual values. If we run this, you can see, yeah, it's completely off, right? So, for example, let's, so our first uh, data set right here, right, from the CSV file uh, has a value of 40 sales. But our model picked negative 15.254164. That's really, really inaccurate. Uh, and that's because our loss is very high. Right, we didn't train the model enough. So the model is obviously uh, needs more training. And we need to somehow lower this loss value. And we can do that by repeatedly training the model. So right here, I'll click the run button again. And it will run a thousand and ten more times. All right, it'll train the model a thousand and ten more times. So let's run it, and then you can actually see the loss went down by like fifteen hundred. That's pretty good. Uh, but we can keep doing that. But as you can see, I'm running this again, and it keeps going down. So let's try getting it as close to zero as we can yeah so right here 0 0.0332 this is telling us that our loss is pretty low right and we want a low loss because that means our model is even more accurate so right now let's use a model and see what happens yeah so you can see a drastically different result it's way more accurate All right this it predicted the first value to be 40.29, which is pretty close to 40, uh, 42.1 or 42.2, which is close to 42, and then so on and so forth, right? All these values are pretty close to their actual values. So that right there is, uh, yeah, let me, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So. Hopefully you got all of that. Uh, let me know if you've finished typing that. Um, 
Oh, okay. All right. So these are everything you should type. And let me know through question and answer if you have any questions on um, how that works or if you need any clarification, if you're confused. Yeah, so CSV should be, it, yeah, so you wrote CVS, it should be C, CSV. And I think everything else looks fine. Yeah, just make sure to change this to CSV and not CVS. So it's pd.read CSV or uh, underscore CSV. I should fix it. So make sure to fix it and then run it again. Okay, yeah, hopefully that works. Yeah, I'll get time for folks to copy here. Let me. These are all the steps we've done. I'll, I'll move on. So that was our lemonade project. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good job. All right. So that was our lemonade project. Um, if you didn't get these down, make sure to check live lecture notes. You can copy it down. But um, I'll move on. So that was our lemonade project. All right. So we'll move on to our next project. So it's still supervised learning uh, but we're going to explore uh, a more relevant topic right um so right here before we've kind of we've we've um we looked at this problem of lemonade sales right where we want to find the relationship between temperatures and sales and we found that the relationship was y equals 2x right if we multiply the temperature or yeah, yeah, if we multiply the temperature by two, we will get the sales. But what if we have something like this, right? How are we going to find all these numbers? And these are 13 input variables. That's crazy, right? So we use the same concept or the same strategy that we've done uh, in our lemonade problem, right? Prepare the data, create model, train model, use model. We'll just have to make some changes. 
right here. This is a problem. Uh, you don't have to really know what all of these means. Uh, but right here, this column 14, we're trying to find the median value of a house. Right? That's, that's the problem, or that's the problem description of this project. Um, given all these input variables, right? So like some of these inputs include like, the crime rate, right? Like the rate of crime. We have uh, age. This is pretty explanatory, right? The age of the uh, place. We have oh, yeah, the age of the property. We have uh, you know, property tax. This is like if you're close to the, the Charles River, right? These are all, are all inputs that somehow affects our median value of the house, right? Or in other words, um, there are 13 variables, or at least in this problem, there are 13 variables that determine how expensive your house is. And we want to use machine learning to figure out how, if we can even predict this, right? Because the whole point of machine learning uh, is we, we want to predict complex equations like this or using complex numbers like this we want to uh, predict outcomes so, so just think of it as like the goal of this project is to find how expensive the house is all right so let's move on here you can see uh this is all the 13 input variables that were used to calculate the median value uh, it's the same thing. So once again, never forget this. There are four steps that you have to remember. Prepare the data, create the model, train the model, and use the model. That's no different, right? From all the other projects that we'll uh, encounter. You want to remember these four steps. All right, so what's different? Well, our independent variable has 13 values instead of one, right? Um, when we create the model, our shape of our input layer is 13 instead of one. But other than that, it's pretty much the same problem. All we're, all we're doing is modifying our independent and X values. Okay. So let's, uh, maybe you can, okay. Uh, I guess I'll explain this too. So right here, this is a visualization or like kind of a picture of what the, the uh, machine learning model is doing. If we have, let's say, 13 inputs, right? These 13 inputs define what our outcome will be. All right, so this is like a little picture you can think of as, this is like the crime rate, this is the whatever ZN is, this is whatever uh, INDUS is. These are all our input variables. We'll define what our Y value will be. And what our machine learning model is doing is it's finding these values, right? These are the weights. That's why it's called W. Uh, well, it's trying to find a relationship between this input and this Y, right? And you can see that there are 13 of these because there are 13 inputs, there are 13 weights. And B is just a, a constant that you add. So this, this is basically the math of how our model finds the Y value, right? It's this equation right here. Uh, if you're interested in, in math, you can check this out. And yeah, so this is, uh, a neuron. So this is a quick biology lesson. Um, but like the neurons and like your body and like your brain, right, they kind of look like this. And in the same way that um, neurons receive input and they send output, that is what our layers are doing, right? We have this Y uh, perceptron, right? It's receiving input and it's sending output uh yeah this is the same thing basically uh but that's kind of 
that's it for explanations. And let's actually try to uh, code this project. So we'll go back to Colab. And the way you create a new file, so you click File right here. And then you click, click New Notebook. Okay, so make sure to create your no new notebook. <laughs> and let's do the problem. Uh, this is the CSV file, so you can see, well, it's like a lot of data right here. Uh, this, these are 14 columns to be exact. Uh, let's, here, I'll put it in the question and answer uh, channel. That's the CSV file for our Boston project, Boston housing project. Uh, all right, so make sure to make a new notebook. All right, file new notebook. Okay, so let's start. We will use basically the same steps. So as always, we need our input statements. So uh, uh, I'll label it uh, one more time. These are the inputs, our import statements. Uh, make sure to click run. Yeah, and you want to make sure the syntax is all right. Yeah. Okay. So let's create a new code cell. You can also, there's, if you hover over at the bottom of the cell, you can press code instead of having to go back and forth, back and forth, creating a new code cell. You can just add it to the bottom of each code block. So let's create our four steps, or let's let's define our four steps again. Pair data. Uh, create model. Create model. Uh, we want to train model. And then we want to use model. All right, so same steps. Uh, we use the CSV file. We create a data path. I'll go a little bit quicker this time because it's the same steps as before. So we want to create a path variable, set it equal to a string um, of the link to that CSV file. All right. And then we will create a variable to store all that data. We'll call it Boston because this is the Boston housing project. So we'll set that equal to right PD dot read CSV data path. Right, we're passing in data path, and we're storing all the uh, data in our CSV file into this Boston variable. Once again, to see if it worked, we do Boston dot head. Uh, so this right here, this method, it prints the first five um, rows of data. This is a pretty useful method. So let's call this. Make sure to run the import statements first. And you can see, yep, it works. All right, we have our five entries, our five rows. We have all of our columns. Yeah, that's that means Boston was successfully stored. So yeah. Okay. Now we got to define our independence and dependent variables, right? Do same thing. Just to make it a little easier, what I'll do is Right, right over here, I will print boston.columns. And you'll see pretty soon, but if I run this, uh, it will give us the column. And what we can actually do is we can copy paste all of this. And instead of having to, um, 
equal to Boston. Instead of having to write each and every one of these uh, columns, right? That's 13 columns. That, that takes way too long. You can just copy paste that right here. Just make sure delete this part because this is our output. We don't want this right here is our de dependent variable, not our independent variable. So we'll go ahead and delete this part here. You see that if you count it, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah. Okay. So there's 13 input variables like we've mentioned before. And then we'll create our dependent variable, which is just uh, med fee for, for median value. And then to check that that was successful, we're going to just print out independent and dependent. Let's run that. And you can see, yep, it worked. There's like a lot of rows. So what it did right here is it shortened it down. Uh, but you can see that all um, 506 rows we successfully stored. Oh yeah, this is, it's cause it's, um, or there's too many uh, input or too many columns. So it kind of had to split it off. But this right here, all of this, oh, oh not, not that, all of this is, our, is our depend our independent variable our x value it's our input right and this right here this column this one column is our dependent variable and then you can kind of see over here this describes the shape of our variables right the independent variable has 506 rows and 13 columns the uh, dependent variable has 506 rows and column. I'll, give, I'll, I'll leave it here so you can copy while I create the model. So once again, the same steps apply for creating the model. We create our X value. This time we set our shape equal to 13. Oh yeah, also make sure that when you're passing in the shape that you put brackets around it. Right, that's the proper syntax. So make sure to put brackets. So this right here, um, if you don't know what it means, it's saying define input layer with 13 inputs. Our Y layer. There's a dense. Um, we will, since our uh, median value right here, right? Oh, oops, no, I don't want to do that. There's only one uh, value we want to return or one output variable, right? Which is our median value. That's why we pass in one uh, into the dense layer. And then make sure to write it in terms of x. All right, this is our, once again, this is our equation. Uh, y. And then let's create our model. TF plus there's models. Like this y. And then we will compile the model with the same loss function. So I'll give time for folks to copy this down. But you can see it's, it's basically the same steps as the Lemonade project. It's the same process of collecting data from a CSV file, uh, reading it, making sure it works, creating the independent and dependent variables, and uh, making sure that works, uh, creating the model. So that's like creating the X and Y values. 
and then uh, initializing the model and compiling it. Right, it's the same process as uh, before. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, let's try running it see what happens yeah I already ran this before uh, let's run this yep works all right let's do the same steps we want to train the model so we'll call the fit method we pass in the independent and dependent variables. Make sure to define the epoch count. All right, we want to set it equal to, let's do a thousand. And then make sure to do for both equals zero. So we don't write a, a thousand print statements. And then we'll do. 10 more uh, iterations or epochs. And so we can see the loss. Uh, so we'll run that. It takes a lot more time. Notice that it takes a lot more time right here. If you can see, it says executing and then the number of seconds it takes, you can see it's a lot slower because we have a larger data set and 13 input variables, right? Before we only had one input and one output, but this time we have a lot larger data set. And that's why it takes a lot longer to run. So don't worry, don't freak out if it's taking a long time. It's just like that. Uh, training the model will take even longer time. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so right here you can see that we ran or retrained our model 1,010 times, right? 1,000 plus 10. And it resulted in a loss of around 26. Oh, I'm gonna zoom in. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you can see that our loss was around 27, which is, it's not bad, but it can be better, right? So the way we solve that is we could run it again, right? So we'll do it a thousand ten more times. So this will take a lot of time. Okay, um, you can see it went down by a little, which is, it's not too bad. I mean, we can try one more time, right? We could try running this one more time and seeing if it works. Uh, I mean, I guess we can do that, why not? But at some point, you'll reach a limit on how, um, how much loss you're able to, like, or, or how close you can get to zero, right? Because the whole point is we want to minimize loss. We want to make our model more accurate. Uh, but at some point, you will hit like a limit right here, right? We ran 1,010 more times, but it's still stuck at 24. And it's, that's just like that. It's not its fault. Um, later on, we will learn uh, a way to kind of go around this and lower our loss even more. But right now, 
uh, our current model has a limit on how accurate it could be. All right, so this is kind of our limit right here. Uh, but let's see uh, how accurate our model is with a loss of around 24, 25. Uh, so we'll do the same steps, right? We want to print the prediction from the model, passing in the independent, right? This right here, remember that this is, we define this independent variable in step one, right? This is all our data, our 13 columns of data. Right, so we're passing in all of that into our prediction. So we could our our model could uh, predict the med v or median value. Right, and then we'll compare it to the actual med v values. Dependent. Okay, so let's run. Oh, actually, that's a lot of. I, I forgot. Um, since we have like five hundred six rows of data, it, it's gonna take a long time looking through all of them. So let's only pick. Uh, let's let's pick the first five. Oh, it just keeps going. Yeah, let's let's pick the first five. So what we can do is, um, if you recall, um. Uh, from like substrings, right? You can do brackets and then um, this, right? So this is saying uh, from index zero to uh, five, or not including five, up to but not including five. So this is uh, this. This gives us the first five rows, and let's do the same thing for dependent. We don't want to look at all 506 rows. That's way too much data. Uh, so let's run this cell. OK, there you go. So we can kind of pre uh, kind of compare and see. Well, for the first value, right, the 24.0, our model gave us 28, 29, right? Which is, it, it's not bad, right? And the same thing goes for uh, this. 21.6, the second value of med fee is supposed to be 21.6, but our model gave us 23.7, which is around 24, right? Um, the same goes for here. It's supposed to be 34.7, but we got 30. And this one, same thing, right? But you can see this one is 36, right? Uh, the, the value is supposed to be 36.2. But notice how our model gave a value of 28.76, right? That's that's off by eight. So it's it's not bad, but it's not good. Like it, we can do better. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me know if I need to zoom in more. Oh yeah, I can. Two fifty. I think two hundred is the right is good, so we can see everything. But yeah. Okay, so this I'll give time to copy this. But even if you can't copy all this, I just want you to like see the process of how the model works. Uh, I'll, there you go. You can copy this. I, I'm sure you probably, hopefully, you copied number one. So I'll just show this part. Yeah. The only thing, that, thing that's really changed from our Lemonade project is that we've just changed the shape of the independent variable. So it shouldn't be too different.
And I'm always, as always, if you have questions, um, feel free to type it in the channel. Or if you have any error messages, you could let me know. I'll give like one more minute to copy it down. Um, We got that down. Uh, yeah, so that's it for our Boston project. Um, it's it, it was kind of an extension of the Lemonade project, okay? but a lot more complex, a more difficult problem uh yeah so i i don't think i have time to cover the two more topics so i'll, I'll or i'll cover the last topic and then i believe we can call it a day um yeah. okay so I'll, I'll just cover this since i believe this is a more important topic than the uh the last topic i have so yeah. So here we'll start learning a little bit about deep learning. All right, so this uh, phrase right here, hidden layer, this is what kind of makes up a neural network. So what exactly is a neural network? Well, um, if you remember, uh, I kind of talked about neurons right like the biology thing let's see if i can find it is it here yeah yeah so if you remember this neurons right that's where neural network comes from it's a network of these these things and what are these things again these are things that receive an input and send an output that's what a neuron is all right so imagine if this is one the neuron what is a whole Plump or whole network of neurons look like. This is what it looks like. like what? Look at all these lines. Uh, this is a multi layer neural network. It's a network of multiple layers of neurons. So, um, right here, this is what we're accustomed to, right? Uh, in the Boston housing problem, we had this thing where 
there are 13 input variables, there's one output, right? This is, these are two layers, right? This, uh, let me use the, the laser pointer. This right here, actually it might be a little, huh, okay. Uh, this, this layer, this layer is our input layer, right? That's one layer. And this right here is our output layer. So you can see there are only two layers, All right? So it's pretty simple. Oh, that's not, oops. Um, but if we add layers in between them, right? Layers in between the input and the output layer, our neural network gets more layers and it becomes more complex. So basically how it works is that each of these, so, so right here, if you can count, there are eight input layer neurons. Um, you can see that each of these eight inputs feed into one of these neurons in the hidden layer. And then they do it for the other neuron in the hidden layer. They do it for all of the hidden layer neurons. Right? And then you can also stack hidden layers. You can have multiple hidden layers in between an input layer and an output layer. So let's kind of see, let's visualize. So if we have one hidden layer in between an input and an output layer, this is what it kind of looks like. You can see that uh, this hidden layer has a dimension. Sorry, uh, the input or the, the hidden layer has a dimension of 506 and 5. Right? Um, these are actually the same numbers from our Boston housing pro problem. Uh, if you remember, this 506. Um, but you, don't, you, you should focus on this number right here to the right. Right, five. That is describing the dimension of the hidden layer. So how many neurons are in the hidden layer? So currently there are five neurons, five nodes. Uh, right here, the input layer has 13 nodes. Like these, these circles are the nodes. And then our output layer has one node. So if you don't remember what hidden layers are, just think of this whole mess. You might kind of understand. Um, but that right here is multi-layer neural net. So this is what a neural network is, right? It's a bunch of layers of, uh, perceptrons, right? And that is essentially what, it's a glimpse of what deep learning is, right? It's creating these neural networks and, um, adding more complexity and more intermediary, right? Intermediary, intermediary steps into our calculations. So uh, we can actually try creating our own hidden layer. Um, what we do is, if you recall, in this section of creating our model, we can create um, a hidden layer. Right? And the only change is that uh, we first define a hidden layer. We'll call it H. And then, uh, we pass in not only the shape, right? The shape of the hidden layer, but we want to pass in this, uh, activation parameter. Activation equals swish. Okay. Uh, so we can actually add that into our Boston housing project code. So if you go into your own code lab, hopefully you have all of this written down right here. What we can do to create our own hidden layer is just actually first, I kind of want to compare. So if I run this, well, it's going to take a long time. Uh, in the meantime, we can start typing. Uh, so once again, we create our hidden layer and the way we define it is like how we define our Y layer. 
we do tf.keras.layers.fence. So we pass in this number right here. That's because this is the shape of our hidden layer, right? We want five nodes. And then make sure that you set the activation equal to softmax. Or not softmax, sorry, swish. Swish. Um, this right here. And then what you want to do is you want to write it in terms of x. Because you can think of the hidden layer as a function of x. Right, in mathematical terms, that means h equals mx plus b, right? h is a function of x, uh, is a function of x. And uh, this right here, this is saying uh, define hidden layer with five outputs. I'll, I'll call them nodes, five nodes. Yeah. Okay. And then another adjustment you have to make is you have to replace this X with H. All right. We want our Y layer to be a function of H. So you can kind of see, kind of visualize the, the, the input flow as it starts with X, right? This is our input layer, right? Our input layer, uh, essentially transfers this data to the hidden layer. And the hidden layer transfers this data to the Y layer to output. So right here, I'll write it down. Uh, y is now a function of H. And uh, we define the output layer with one output. And that's really the only change you have to make. But you'll see some results. So right here, uh, you see right here before, before I change or add a hidden layer, this is our loss. So remember this number around 25. Uh, let's run this cell, All right? We want to update this so that our hidden layer, uh, is added. So we're going to run this. See, so now let's trade it again. And this is the before, and let's see the after. Let's run. It will take a long time uh, because this hidden layer, although it's a lot more powerful, it makes it a lot more complex and adds more uh, time that the machine has to trim. So it might take a bit longer, probably, I think it might take like a minute. Uh, but yeah, just, if you wait, you'll see. Okay, so it, it went down by like one, right? And that, that's, that's okay. Went down by one. Uh, what we can do is we could add more hidden layers. Right, so right now we only have one hidden layer, but we what we can do is we can create another hidden layer right under it just to get better results. So we'll create an H variable. It, it, it can be the same name, it doesn't matter, but you want to make a couple more adjustments. Right, here are some layers. We'll make sure to make another dense layer. We'll do five. Uh, make sure activation is equal. Activation equals swish. Uh, this time we'll pass an H. And that's because uh, the H right here, or this H is a function of this H. Right? So what, is, what it's saying is uh, whatever output from this hidden layer, it will feed into uh, the input of this layer, right? So the input flow would go from X to H to H to Y. 
So this is essentially adding another layer uh, between all these steps. So we'll run it and see if it makes a difference. Let's run it again. All right, so it went down by the one. It's okay. Uh, we can keep training it. So I'll just do it again. Uh, but you can see that even with a lot of hidden layers, uh, it didn't decrease, or the loss didn't decrease by that much. And um, that that's basically the limitation of our model, right? There's a, there's a certain point where our machine will kind of struggle or have, or have a hard time to, um, to accurately predict something, right? And that, like, that's because this problem is pretty complex, right? Like the equation I showed you, this is a very complex equation, right? And it's pretty hard for the machine to uh, accurately predict. You can see it went down uh, by that, like, is it like two or three? So I mean, I guess you can keep on training it, but there will eventually be another point where uh, our loss can't go down by anymore, right? And that's just that's just the limit of this model. So I'll just run it one more time. This will be our last time running it, and then we will predict the model. So it went down by like one. That's not bad. Uh, you can see like compared to before adding a hidden layer and adding it now that it decreased by like, I wouldn't say like a substantial amount, but it decreased uh, pretty well. And now we can use the model to predict um, our median values and it will be a little bit more accurate. Or yeah, basically it'll be a, I mean, if you can see over here, the difference isn't too much. I, I know this is, it's supposed to be 24.0, but it predicted 27. Uh, but you can see like compared to the previous, uh, prediction, it differs by, by at most three, right? Or sorry, not three, like four. Which is uh, it's okay, it's it's not perfect, uh, but you can see it's getting closer and closer to these values, um, and that's really the like like how powerful this model can be, right? As if as you train it to decrease the loss, your model will be a lot more accurate in predicting values, and that's really what um, I want you to take away from this machine learning lesson is that you can use machine learning as a tool to predict a lot of outcomes. And that's really uh, what I want you to learn. Um, so that's our hidden layer. Let me see if I have any more slides. Uh, yeah, yeah, so this is what you can see, like adding another hidden layer. So you, you can basically add more hidden layers. Like you can add another third hidden layer, but like realistically, you don't need, uh, I mean, I think at most you probably need two, but you don't need three hidden layers. That's like overkill. Uh, that's way too many hidden layers. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can add another hidden layer. Yeah. So once again, 
this is what they when someone says neural network you can kind of um think of it like this right what we've coded right here is a neural network right with all these layers of an input layer hidden layer and an output layer and this is just a cool picture that someone put here um i believe it looks kind of like the brain uh but this right here is also a network very uh complex network um but yeah that's the neural network um i, I guess i'll leave time for people to post questions and if you need to copy this down, uh, wait, hold on. Uh, I guess right now is the time to ask questions or if you need to copy this down. Does it work for for you guys? Does work. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Good job. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is very impressive that you're following along. Uh, does it work for others? Now's the time to like ask questions if you have any. Yeah, do you have a question? I noticed you're typing. Um, Now, okay, Let's see. Hmm. I don't know why it's red. I mean, okay, if it works now. Oh. 
Yeah, that's weird. I don't know why that doesn't work. Uh, hmm. Okay. I guess that's it. Um, if you have any more questions, I believe you could ask more in the question and answer channel. But otherwise, um, that's it for today. Uh, I mean, it's not there. Uh, yeah, so that's the end of the machine learning lesson. Uh, there's one more topic we might cover later on. Uh, but yeah, that's it for me. And thank you for having me.